Hi everyone, this is Ellie May with Silhouette Secrets Plus and today I am going to show you a neat way that you can splice apart a large design. Um, a lot of users will use this if they are trying to print and cut larger than their printer is capable of printing. So you can cut an image apart and looking at my image here, you can see that it's 20 inches by 26 inches and I don't have a printer that can print that large. I am just using a random photo that I've been working with, so it is nothing special in particular, um, but it's just being used as an example. You could use this with any sort of object or design that you're working with. You want to, um, it'll work with a JPEG or a PNG file, which is a photo file. If you are working with something like an SVG, that gets to be a little bit more complicated because it is made up of pieces and different cut lines. So if you're going to cut something apart, um, the easiest way is a JPEG or a PNG file. So you'll see here on the screen. Now I'm going to start from the beginning so I can show you a few little tricks that will help you along the way. So I'm going to come over here to a new file. And then I'm just going to bring in a photo that I've been working with. So I have this photo. I'm just going to bring it in. I'm dragging it and dropping it onto my design mat. And you can see that it comes in at a really large size. It also gives me the low resolution um, warning here. Um, that's okay, I'm gonna resize this. So I'm gonna come up here to my scale icon and I'm actually going to resize this about 33% just so we can see it better on the screen. And that brings it into about 13 inches. And what I wanna work with is I'm gonna close this little lock aspect ratio and then I'm going to choose 20 inches. And I'm kind of working off of a question that was on my Facebook group. I will put a link down below to my Facebook group. We do a lot of troubleshooting in there. But I'm going with some of the dimensions that they were working with. So I want to keep this as simple as possible so you can work with your images. So I have this image that's 20 inches tall and 26.667 wide. Now, the easiest way to work with this is first off, I have a mat underneath my photo. I'm just going to turn this to no mat just because it, it changes that mat out of the way. And then what I'm going to do is I want to start with a starting point. So I want to put my left edge along the zero line, which is on my ruler here. Rulers are a designer edition feature or higher, so you do need an upgrade to have these rulers show. They are very, very handy. And the next thing I'm going to show you is also a designer edition feature. So it's called guides. And if I come over here to my right ruler, I can just click on it and drag a little blue line out. And I'm going to put that at the zero line. So I'm going to put it at the X axis of zero. And then what I can do is when you have a guide out here, the blue line shows up as a guide. It's not going to print. It's not going to cut. It is just a guide to help you in designing. And I will put up links to all of these terms in the description below. But what I can do is this will now snap to that guide. So as, you, as I show on the screen, as I move closer to it, it's going to snap to that guide. So I know it's at the zero point. And then what I'm going to do is in my top ruler, I'm going to drag a blue line down, a guide, and I'm going to bring it to the zero mark on the Y axis. And I'll close that so you can see. So zero on the Y axis. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down and it's going to snap to that. Now you'll see that little arrow. Just ignore it. It's the top of my mat if I were to be cutting. So I have my photo at a zero, zero axis of X and Y. This is going to help us with measuring and we're going to use this ruler. So I have a large photo that's 20 inches by 26 inches. And just for hypothetical purposes, say I wanted to print this out at that size. Not sure why I'd want to print my photo of my shirt, but we're going to use it as an example. So I can come over and I, for example, it was an 8 by 10 size that they wanted to cut it into so that they could print and cut with an, a letter size sheet of paper. So if we're going to cut this photo into 8 by 10 sections, we're going to come over here to our knife. And I do want to disclose that the knife tool is a very data heavy tool. 
So the more data that you are changing, it takes more processing power. So if you have a computer that can't quite handle that, you may experience crashing or it takes a longer time to process. So just something to keep in mind. The more data intensive your file is or more graphics of your file, that will also influence how the knife tool works. I am currently, if I go to help and about, I'm on a Windows computer, I'm currently using 4.4.552, and I wanna point that out because there's gonna be some differences here. So if I come over here to my knife, you're gonna see I have some options up here. I'm gonna uncheck the auto apply. This means that when I use the knife tool, it is not going to automatically cut my image apart, and I really need it not to cut it. I need to change some things before that. So what I need to change is I'm going to change the line thickness that my knife cuts apart. And this is where my software version comes into play. So on my software version, I am going to come over here and we wanted an eight by 10 section. So I'm gonna come down 10 inches. So here is the 10 inch mark on my ruler. And I'm gonna move this over just a little bit so it's closer to the rulers. So my 10 inch mark is right here on the ruler. I'm going to hold my shift key down and I'm going to drag my knife to the left. Then I'm gonna release my mouse button. Keep your shift key held down so it draws a straight line. Now I'm gonna open up my line style panel on the right. And I wanna change the thickness to zero. Now here is where I'm gonna show you a difference. I'm gonna pop in a screenshot of a current version of the Silhouette Studio software. So a higher version than I am currently using. It's going to have the thickness for the knife up here in the quick access toolbar. So you could use it in either location. So if you have thickness up here in your quick access toolbar, you can change it there as well. And that is shown in that screenshot. I don't have it in this version that I currently have open. So I'm going to highlight the numbers. I'm gonna type zero and I'm gonna hit enter. So that is going to tell the software that I want a line thickness for my knife of zero. And then I'm going to click apply. And you do not see anything happen on the screen because it was a zero thickness. However, if I choose my select tool over here on the left and I move it, you can see that it cut that apart. Now I want to hit undo because I want it to go back in the exact location I had it. The next part, so we're doing eight by 10 squares. So I cut and I'm gonna move my line style panel over here. So I cut at the 10 inch mark, I'm gonna grab my knife, and now I wanna go down and guess what, 20 inches, that's the next line. So I only needed one cut line here, but I want eight inch on the horizontal. So I come over at the top to my eight inch mark on my ruler, click and hold my shift key down and draw a line all the way to the bottom. Again, auto apply is unchecked up here. You can see my line thickness is still, it, every time it resets in my software version. So I'm gonna click highlight it, type zero and hit enter. And then I'm gonna choose apply. If I choose my select tool, now I have two separate pieces. These are both approximately eight I mean, as close as you can get, 10.004 by 7.975. And that could be in how I chose that. So if I come back here to before auto apply, if I zoom in, come back out here, could be that I just grabbed it just a little bit shy of the eight inch mark. So I could use my little arrow key, there's eight inch, and then I can choose apply again. Now I have 10 by 7.99. So you're very, very close and you could play with that. This is just a quick video. So I'm going to undo here, undo again, move it back. Now I need to go another eight inches. 
So I'm going to come choose my knife, go to this 16 inch mark on my ruler, hold my shift key down, draw the line, change my line thickness to zero again and choose apply. Now if I choose my arrow, my select arrow, you can see I have these eight by 10 pieces. This one I got a little bit more accurate. Again, just a quick video to show you how you can break things apart. Now I still have this big long section. You would need to do it one more time. So 16 here, and then I need to go another eight from that. So at the 24 inch mark, and then we draw a line, change our line thickness, hit apply, and now we have these little pieces out here that I would probably just delete. So I'll delete those for now. Now, as an example, if you wanted, you can see here that each of these little sections has a selection box around it. So now it is essentially six different pieces of that image that you could then piece together for a larger than matte cut or you know, a sign or something like that. You would just have to connect those together and get them as close as possible. But since we used the zero line thickness, those should match up exactly. So if you wanted to do a print and cut, I could come over here, I could choose my mat again, because I like to print and cut with a mat, and then I could choose letter. I'm gonna change my transparency down so I can see that. Set up my print and cut turn my registration marks on and I like to have my show cut border and my show print border on and then I always choose restore defaults just so I get the best print and cut and you could come over here and this is outside of my print and cut so they may have been printing um, wider than that or the other option you have is you technically wouldn't have to do a print and cut on this type of design because it has straight edges. So if your printer, I'll turn these registration marks off. If your printer would print that eight and a half or that eight by 10, you could just use a paper trimmer and cut off the edges of that. And you'd get a straight line and you wouldn't have to worry about your registration marks. Um, I think sometimes we, while it's really cool that we do have this option, sometimes we make it harder on ourselves than we really need to. Um, it doesn't need to be contour cut around a certain image. It just needs to be cut on those straight edges. Now, if you have a design, like in my Facebook group, someone posted these large nutcrackers and it is a super cool um, design. I will link a post for, from the group in there, but you'll have to be a member to, to view it. It is a really neat post in the group on how she print and cut these nutcrackers. In that case, you would want to print and cut, but you could use the exact same method that I just showed with the knife in order to cut that apart in the sections that you needed to be able to print and cut. Now, if I, or if you have a large format printer, um, I'm able to print on a 12 by 12 sheet. So if I come over here and I change it to a 12 by 12, I'm gonna uncheck the show print border because I'd have to change it in my printer settings but I could easily print and cut around an eight and a half by 10 or eight by 10 photo or section of the photo. So this is just one of the possibilities that you can do in the Silhouette Studio software, like copy and paste. There are about 10 different ways you could do it. So I'm sure there's other methods out there that you could do, but this one is a pretty simple way that you can use that knife tool if your computer can handle the data and the changes in that data. So. Um, look for some more tutorials coming out using this shirt that I have just cut apart on the screen. Um, I will be posting some more things on print and cut coming up very, very soon. Thank you for watching and have a great day.